Thank you for downloading the Rise Fitness Podcasts. Written and presented by Olivier Keeley. Today I want to talk about meal planning. Um, I think it's, it's something which is pretty interesting, something I value a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that's where the vast majority of clients I've worked in the past with have been struggling. And I think if we discuss about it, we'll kind of basically give value um, on how things could be set up the right way. Now, what's meal planning? I mean, the word is pretty straightforward. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory. But it's just the, the matter, the, the fact of getting prepared, especially on the nutrition side, what to eat, when to eat, how to eat it, which quantity. Uh, it's, it's a big question mark for, for, for a lot of people, actually. Mm. Um, and they come to, to, to me, to, to any fitness professional, they probably Google it online as well. What should I eat if I want to lose some excess fat, for example? Or what should I eat if I want to increase my performance? It's a big, big question mark. And, I, and I've developed over the years a seven-step framework uh, on how to make that efficient. Okay. And So, well, no, no, I just, I just want to um, put some put some sort of context in there as well. Uh, so Ollie's talking about today here on this podcast, the meal planning regime that he has developed. And if you are following Ollie on his social medias, you will understand that perhaps he's seeing some benefits out of his meal planning regime because he is not only in shape, he's also a fitness, <laughs> an amazing fitness coach as well. So um, where do we start with meal planning? Do you, do you bulk in fats, carbs, sugars, or how, how does it work? For instance, if I'm, I'm trying to build... yeah. What do, yeah. I, what do I do? Well, uh, you, 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 you'll be surprised with the first step. What's step first one? step is goal setting. Okay. It's the most boring step. <laughs> <laughs> but it's needed. And, and you will see, we're, we're not even going to get to the technical bit of it towards the end. First step is goal setting. Like, what do you want? Like, Jeff, what do you want? You, you want to put some size? You want to put yeah, some? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like an extra five kilos. Of what? Of um, mass. Of mass. Mass could be... A mix of muscle and fat. Mm. So what is it? Okay, I, I find building muscle really tricky. Okay. Um, so, uh, and I eat like a trooper. Excellent. So, um, but I can't seem to keep any of that body weight on. I seem to burn quite a lot quite quickly, even if I'm eating, you know, quite large portion sizes and things. Yeah. So what do I do? Yeah. So first thing, we, we have the goal. Mm. Five kgs of mass. Mm. Historically, have you ever achieved that? Uh, not really. I've plateaued for a long time and okay. I've been trying to introduce a new stimulus um, to try and kick it off again, but it doesn't seem to happen. Okay. And what sort of time frame we're looking at? Um, I'd like to do it over the next uh, eight to 12 weeks. Okay. Now, in my conversations with, with, with prospective clients or even clients, when we have this conversation, I will, I will stop you right there. We've, we've never achieved that before, okay? And I'm, I'm not going to set you up for, for failure or even set your expectation high. If you've mm. never achieved five kilos of mass, in eight weeks, it means on average you'll be putting on one kg, 1.5 kg right? yeah, yeah, sure. per week. And it means everything goes well. So that's uh, two, two and a half pounds, three yeah. pounds of weight. Yeah, mm. yeah. Every, every week, which is feasible, now we're going to get to the, the, the third step, which is the analysis. Mm. Um, you did mention earlier about you not being able to, to gain size because you're pretty active. Yeah. Yes. So now we need to figure out, okay, how many calories are you burning a day? Mm. Which is the analysis. And, and that's, that's the part of the meal. We haven't even started plotting meals yet. How many calories are you burning in a day? And I love to analyze pretty much a, a mock week for you. I'll put a heart rate monitor on you to mm. see, okay, what's... Jeff is doing on a typical week. Get some numbers. Really understanding your eating patterns. Mm. Right now, you're, you're consuming about three to four meals in a day. Mm. I will try my best not to change it. Probably increase the quantities per meal, which means you'll have to allocate more time for your meals. Maybe mm. not a quick 10-minute sandwich every now and then, just sitting down for like 20, 30 minutes. So these are the kind of things you need to set up before getting into, okay, I need to consume 5,000 calories. So that was... Step three, the analysis. Mm-hmm. Step four, we're going to go into the calories, which is the juicy part, which is where everybody is like, yeah, that's, that's the good stuff. Okay. We, we look at your height, weight, activity level, and, and we want to figure out what your TDE is, total daily energy expenditure. 
as I said, we did analyze it the week before, so we mm. know what it is. For you to gain some weight. Yeah, let's call it weight or, or body mass. It could be a mixture of muscle or, or it, fats. It will be, because there will be some fat in this. Yeah. It, there will be, and, and I'm talking from personal experience as well, because I came from, I used to be a pretty small frame. Yeah. I, I see myself as pretty small frame. It takes a lot of time, a right. lot of time. So what we'll be doing is figure out what your maintenance calories are. Height, age, mm-hmm. activity level. I will, I will actually try to assess your body fat percentage as well to, to make sure that over time we're not consuming too much food, which ends up obviously getting stored as fat. Mm-hmm. And then during the analysis week, what we would have done as well was would have been figure out, okay, are you carb dominant in, in your diet? Are you fat dominant or are you protein dominant? Possibly sugar dominant. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is, in, West, in Western society, yes, uh, pe- most people are carb dominant. Right. For the goal of gaining size, you kind of, okay. It's, it's very important, however, to make sure you consume the right amount of calories, mm. or, of protein, sorry. And, and that will be where most people struggle as well. Mm. Um, roughly, I mean, by the look of you here in the studio, I can be saying that you should be consuming around 150 to 200 grams of protein right. a day. A day? Yeah, a day. Wow. Yeah. Now, to put that into context, 100 grams of chicken breast will give you 30 grams of protein. So roughly, you will be needed about five, 600 grams of chicken breast. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's like. Over half a kilo of yeah. chicken every day. Yes, yeah, sir. I mean, now, now, now comes the part where we have the numbers and then now we need to make, make it fit your lifestyle. You may not like chicken breast. Yeah. So we have to, we have to go through options. Turkey, yeah. beef. Tuna. Tuna, yeah. Uh, salmon, which is a bit fatty, but it shouldn't be that bad. Yeah. And then figure out, okay, because you're probably a very busy person always on your food, we may be thinking about convenience as well. Yeah. Protein shakes may be introduced. Okay. It's for the sake of convenience. So as you've seen so far, we, we literally reverse engineered the whole process. Sure. We went from goal setting and then we're coming all the way down to your calories. And, and now we're going to set up a numbers for you. I'll be like, Jeff, uh, this is the number of calories you should be consuming. And for the purpose of this illustration, I will say 2,500 calories, roughly. Okay. okay. Out of which I want 200 grams of protein, uh, about 80 to 90 grams of fat and 200 grams of carbs. Okay. I haven't done the math, but this should add up to 2,500 calories. And once you've done that, very, very important, this number is a weekly average. That's where, again, most people will go wrong because they will take it as a daily average. And when we would have analyzed your week, the, in the previous step, I would have realized that, you know what? Jeff lacks a bit of a pint over the weekend, you know? Yeah. His calories are much higher over the weekend. So what we'll do, we'll allocate more calories over the weekend. We're just okay. going to zigzag that. Which, yeah. In reality, it's going to sound like Mondays and Tuesdays, you will be highly motivated. So we're going to make you consume about 3,000 calories. Okay? Yeah. To Wednesday, Thursday, maybe a bit busy. You're going to, you've got some appointments running all over the place. Uh, so we're going to reduce that a little bit. We're going to go to 2,000 calories. Towards the weekend, we're going to keep more calories as well. Hmm. And, and that way we're zigzagging and we're really making sure that you always end up with an average of 2,500 calories. And this process is reviewed weekly. Okay. So on top of that, I'm taking in those calories, like you say, and then um, you presumably will also be working on some sort of fitness regime oh, yeah. at the same time so that I'm burning the right amount of fats and uh, and calories yeah. to, to make the progress that we'd already set out in step one. Yeah. yeah. Goal setting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So absolutely. So so what will happen and with that as well is what are we doing in the gym? Mm. We want to build muscle. Mm. Okay. Uh, we, we need to tap into the right energy system. Okay. Uh, we've got three types of energy system. We've got the creative energy system. We've got other two types which are mostly related to cardio. And, and really making sure that your your cardiovascular abilities are where they should be. Hypertrophy training, which is for muscle definition, is not really the goal here. We're talking about mass, which for that purpose, we're going to be looking at the creatine system. Right. The creatine system is, is, is that explosive burst of power. Like a sprinter running a 100 meter, meters race 
use that for literally the first three seconds of the race. So we're going to start looking at you picking up some big weights. Right. That's why uh, there's this common saying, if you want to gain some size, you need to do low reps. But high weight. And then high weight. Right. That's why, because you want to tap into the creatine system. That's why. So we'll have some sort of a programming. We're going to set up what we call a mesocycle, which is a four-week training plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's going to revolve around big weights, big barbell movements, really making sure at first that you learn how to do them right. And so that you don't get hurt. Because if you get hurt, pretty much the process is a bit messed up. So if you get good form at the beginning... You're gonna you're gonna see those um, results and the changes. Yeah, massively. Yeah. E- execution is is extremely important, and mm. and especially when it comes to big barbell movement, that's why most people shy away from them. Is because you have to learn the movement, and learning that movement will will make you aware of a lot of of mobilities and 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 maybe restriction you have in your body. Mm. Um, I'll take the example of the deadlift. The name says it: deadlift. <laughs> it's it's one of the biggest reasons most people get hurt in the gym, especially in the commercial gym space. It's poor execution of it. It's, it's an ego thing to pick up so much weight, but mm. you've got to do it the right way. You've got to have like the hip range to do that. Okay, You've got to learn how to activate your glutes and your hamstrings. Most people don't know how to do it. And it's really break it down movement. It can take up to two to three hours to learn how to do a proper deadlift, for example. Wow. Yeah, not just watching 30-second videos on YouTube. Yeah. And sorry to interrupt. If you are listening to our series of podcasts here to help with your uh, fitness and nutrition regime, uh, one of our podcasts is all about having the confidence to uh, walk into the gym and know what you're doing. So have a listen to that one. Um, and Ollie will go through not feeling as intimidated yeah. as you perhaps might do in a commercial gym situation. Yes. Which is uh, quite intimidating, isn't it? Very. Sometimes? Very. So um, lots of us always walk in saying, yes, we've done the induction, um, but we don't really know what we're doing, you know, in top ends. But have a listen to that podcast and uh, see what you think of Ollie's comments and ideas on uh, walking yeah. into a gym. Yeah. it's It takes a bit of time, and, and I always say, as long as you're willing to 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 learn, you'll be fine. Hmm. Commercial gym spaces are pretty much like a real estate space, which is available for rent. You just rent it by the way of a membership. Go in there, use some machine, do some sort of movement, which is the right thing to do. We want to stay healthy. We want to, to feel good about ourselves. Unfortunately, there is not enough. There is not enough support in the commercial gym environment. I mean, yes, there are personal trainers. Most of them come at a cost, which most people don't want to. Mm, add on or, to a or, big or, gym membership fee. Yeah. 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 And then there's a big gym membership fee as well. Or you just go down the route of self-education, which would take a lot of time. Mm. Uh, but as long as you have that goal setting, which we talked about in step one. Step one. Let's just recap. So goal setting is goal step setting. one. Step two is? Time frame. Time frame. How long are we looking at? How is long? that realistic? Step three. Analysis. Just look at your current patterns. What are you currently doing? Step four. Set up your calories. Step five. Do a mock week, which is test it out. Mm -hmm. And now we're on to step six. Macros. Which are? Macros, protein, fat, and carbs. How do you set them up? Okay. Okay. And that's why I was saying when you go back to step three of the analysis, Jeff, maybe you were carb dominant. So we're going to keep you carb dominant. Because too many changes, too many variables are going to be a bit of a challenge. So we just want to stay in the same line for as long as we can mm-hmm. and then make very minimal switches in between. Uh, set up your calories. If you were carb dominant, we're going to keep you carb dominant. Really making sure that you get the right amount of protein because through training, we're going to be pulling away muscle fibers and we need protein synthesizers to put it back into place. Sure. So that's going to be the macros. Again, it's really making sure that you adhere to it. Really as well, making sure that every week we check to make sure that okay, he's consuming this much. And it's the right way. And it's weekly average, extremely important. Weekly yeah, average, daily average of calories and macros. And then the, the last step, which is the most, most important, I think it trumps everything. It's setting up habits and maintenance, which is, I mean, it's, it's hard enough to make a change, but how to make this change permanent? I mean, if you mm. got your five kgs of, of muscle mass after, let's say, 12 weeks, and you're pretty happy with it. Mm. You do not want to get your foot off the gas and then lose them back up. So how do you do that? You know, and, and that's why like we had to go through this whole process again mm. of 
is that something you can actually see yourself doing for the next year? Hmm. And, and and you will get to the point where they say you gain your five kgs, you're very happy with the way you look, and you'll be surprised by the way your goal will change in this process. You're gonna be like, oh, you know what, I want to be strong now. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, how you readjust your calories with your new maintenance level because now you've increased your weight, so which means your maintenance calories will be up. It's like a car you just remapped. Well, you got to pay a bit more for fuel. <laughs> hmm. You know, I understand. So there, your seven steps of uh, meal planning and nutrition and working out in the gym. If you are enjoying what Ollie is uh, telling us from his experience, his extensive experience, how long have you been a trainer now? Uh, going to the fourth year now. Right, yeah. so four years of being a personal trainer. Yeah. And uh, if you want to get involved in anything that Ollie is doing here with his series of podcasts, um, why don't you get in touch with us here at the station studio at solihoradio.com. You can ask Ollie a question Excellent. and uh, I'll uh, forward it all on to him for his next podcast session. If you've got an idea for a pod um, that Ollie could help you with in terms of nutrition, body mass, um, any uh, any sort of specific training requirements, why don't you get in touch with us here at the station studio at solihoradio.com and Ollie will be able to help you there. Um, thank you very much, Ollie, for joining us for this particular episode. I appreciate thank your you. time today. Thank you. Any uh, final little uh, little gem of training? I will, I will just say, just know that you cannot fail as long as you keep on going. There you go. And that is from Ollie, our trainer and fitness expert here at Solihull Radio. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>